It's an enticing trend that's taken the world by storm. The promise of owning a place on your own, nestled in the heart of the Italian countryside, for the absurdly low price of just one euro. A little more than one dollar. But there has to be some kind of catch, right? From the quaint Sicilian community of Camerata to the pristine mountain village of Olali, there are quite a few shrewd Italian towns that have gotten in on the action. Can you blame them? The one euro home business is great publicity. Toronto, one of the first European cities to join this unique club, is a port town on the coast of Puglia, located on the heel of Italy. In recent years, its population has begun to dwindle, and the local officials definitely want to reverse this downward trend. Buyers hoping to get their hands on a piece of property here must commit to renovating the properties if they want to keep them, and this process can cost thousands of dollars, so they're not exactly handing out freebies. You still have to put a lot of work in if you want to score one of these homes. While 15 buildings initially went up for grabs early last year, since then more listings have been put on the market. At this point, you're probably curious to see what the Italian town of Toronto is all about. Keep watching. Toronto is a picturesque piece of coastal paradise. Founded in 706 BC by Dorian Greek immigrants hailing from Sparta, Toronto is laden with olive groves and surrounded by clear, shimmering water. Its rustic appeal has made it an increasingly popular tourist destination in recent years. The surrounding region's must-see sites and attractions include the UNESCO World Heritage Sites of Castel del Monte and Albarobello, the Bursting with Life National Park of Gargano, the spellbinding sea caves of Salento and the old world towns of Otranto, Ostuni, and Gallipoli. Toronto itself is often left off of travel guides and tourist maps, but it's just as mesmerizing and culturally rich as its neighboring towns and villas. The city is often referred to as the capital of the ancient Magna Graecia, and it proudly displays its Greek heritage. In recent times, however, Toronto has been associated with just one thing, the Leva Steelworks, which was once the largest in Europe. The factory, which was built in the late 60s, emitted nauseating fumes into the air for years, before magistrates demanded they either clean up their act or shut down. In May of 2021, the infamous plant's former owners, Fabio and Nicola Riva, were sentenced to lengthy prison terms for their roles in allowing their facility to contaminate the historic city. Now, there is a growing sense Toronto not only has the chance of breaking away from its past, but that the future of this often overlooked city might be bright. Its 44-year-old mayor, Rinaldo Melucci, oversees the operation of the city from his office in the Cita Vecchia, which is Italian for old city. But while the window of his suite looks out towards the ocean, it's not that far from the steelworks that has long defined his town. In the last half century, Leva not only took a devastating toll on people's health and the local ecosystem, but it has also caused quite a bit of psychological damage to Toronto's population. According to Melucci, it stifled education and creativity, and the factory pretty much blackmailed the town's residents into believing they were dependent on Leva to survive. If the steelworks were to close, it would likely have a significant impact on the economy of the city. But when Melucci took office in 2017, he vowed to change that mentality. He wants to present a vision for Toronto that revives the city's old identity while introducing a new, diverse, and proud future. A bold new vision for the future. For millennia, Toronto had a distinct identity, but in the last 50 years or so, a new identity has been pushed upon it by the steelworks. But now, the city has a $1.77 billion budget to help take on this recuperation project, and it feels alive with possibilities. Just this year, Toronto hosted the Italian round of Sail GP, and in 2026, it will host the highly anticipated Mediterranean Games. Much of the city's redevelopment plan, including its brand new stadium that will eventually host Toronto's soccer team, is focused on 2026 as its deadline. Another project that's attempting to help carry the city into a post-industrial future is the enormous Palazzo Archita, a giant 20,000 square meter building that dominates the modern center of the city. It sat empty and desolate for more than a decade. Very soon, however, it will reopen with spaces that include a new art gallery, educational facilities, and a library. The old city's labyrinth of narrow streets. The most important project Toronto is gearing up for, however, is a bit more elaborate. The old city, which was built on the original Doric platform of ancient Toronto, is a beast of its own. It's a literal island, separated from the modern city by a swiveling bridge called the Ponte Girovole. When Leva showed up, it was the old city that was most deeply impacted. It features so much history. Its labyrinth of ancient streets and abandoned buildings is today home to just a small community of people, 
even though it was once the city's bustling central hub. For the past 30 years or so, the old city has been all but abandoned, but fortunately that's all about to change, as new endeavors such as the One Euro Home Project intend on resurrecting it to its former glory. Toronto's Underground Chambers Another feature of Toronto worth checking out are its many underground chambers that lie just beneath the old city. The caves were hollowed out many hundreds of years ago during the Greek age to gather the materials used to build the city's ancient temples, and then later, the medieval city itself. Over the years, these chambers have been used for everything, from burial chambers to smuggling dens. When the steelworks came in and provided new kinds of jobs, people wanted lodgings of higher quality, so the old buildings were less desirable. By the 90s, only a small fraction of the population that lived there 30 years ago called the city their home. Because of that, most of the buildings turned into empty shells, and the majority of this real estate still belongs to the municipality. Because of this, the city of Toronto is presented with an incredible opportunity. While the majority of these buildings are admittedly in bad condition, they still offer a tremendous amount of historical value. The revival of the old city just might be the spark that leads to wider change. By renovating the old city, there is the potential that its cultural assets can act as a catalyst for growth. Toronto's appeal is broad-reaching. The southern Italian region of Puglia, where Toronto is located, is renowned for its cuisine, stone architecture, and dramatic coastal vistas. Toronto has a large port and the cruises are beginning to come back to the city, so it looks like the tourism industry is shaping to be a major part of the city's future. The city's climate is also quite appealing, as the weather has been described as perpetually spring-like. One of Toronto's most striking buildings is the Castello Aragonese, an imposing fortification that was built almost 600 years ago. Another site worth visiting is the Temple of Poseidon, which dates back to 6th century BC. There, you can take an intriguing look at Toronto's former life as an ancient Greek colony. Another Toronto fixture that breathes life into the ancient city is the Toronto Cathedral. This Byzantine structure was originally built in the 10th century, but was rebuilt and restored in the 11th century with the addition of a basilica. Located in the center of the Borgo Antico, the cathedral can be easily reached on foot and is a great building to visit during a tour of the old city. History buffs will probably be interested in checking out the Toronto Spartan Museum located on the Corso Vittorio Emmanuel II. The museum's exhibits are all underground, and they offer a historical look at the ancient Spartan colonists that settled the town. If you want to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city, the Chirati Islands, which lie to the southwest of Toronto in the Gulf of Toronto, are accessible by ferry and offer visitors secluded beaches to relax on and rugged landscapes as well as vast pine forests to explore. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think the city of Toronto is going to see a lot of genuine interest in their one euro home project? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Viewcation if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.